We're here today with PJ Perez, the writer and illustrator of the new trade paperback collection, The Utopian Foundation. And it follows a group of people who were affected by the actions and subsequent sacrifice of a young man who was masquerading as the Utopian in an attempt to find social justice in the world around him. So, PJ, why don't you tell us about the Utopian Foundation? The Utopian Volume 2 is, of course, the sequel to The Utopian, which was a webcomic turned into print series, turned into graphic novel that I created back in 2009 and 2010. And it's much more of a sprawling, soap opera-like ensemble piece that is really getting into just these different character arcs that all kind of build together into this big final arc at the end. So this is a sequel, of course. Do you feel like it's necessary for people to have read the first volume before they jump into the latest paperback collection? It doesn't really require any knowledge of the first story at all to get it or to enjoy it. There's a lot of references to th events that happened previously, but they're all done in a very w vague way that if you're interested, you can go back and read the first volume, but there's enough information that you get it. One of the lead characters in the story is a young man who is paraplegic. Can you tell us about your inspiration behind writing a lead character who's disabled? Um, all the characters in the Utopian Foundation kind of just like s appeared in my mind fully formed, which is really rare because I usually have to like struggle to get through these big casts of people and really think about it. That was one of the reasons why I wanted to tell this sequel in the first place is because these characters just sort of like started populating in my head and I'm, I just had to put it down. Um, which turned into, of course, you know, another webcomic that ran for six years with like a three-year hiatus in the middle, uh, which is why here in 2018 we've got the paperback collection coming out of like basically the first 176 strips of the sequel to The Utopian. But as far as Luis, I really wanted this series to have as much representation as possible. I would go to comic book conventions and I would see a lot of people of various abilities there, but I didn't see the same representation in the product that was a, like available out there. And I really wanted to reflect those comic book fans in a character who they could relate to, but who also I think everyone can relate to. One of the things that I did when I kind of went through the process of, okay, Luis is this former athlete who's the younger brother of like a star athlete, um, who suddenly doesn't have the ability to do, at least in his mind, what he was able to do before. And I'm someone who's very like frustrated when I physically can't do things. I just basically put myself in his shoes. And I didn't want to spend too much time in the series on him like pitying himself. And literally, like the first time that you meet him, he's he's kind of hard on himself because he's being mocked by his friends, kind of playfully mocked, and he goes to the uh, Douglas Center, which is where he volunteers with um, his friend T-Rex, who is another character who was affected by the Utopian's actions. And T-Rex is basically like, look, stop it with the pity stuff. This is, this is your new situation. You just have to learn to deal with it. And it really takes several characters to help him kind of understand that, you know, without giving away too much in the book. Eventually, Luis does, he has a full character arc where he you know, realizes that his disability is really just a ch another challenge for him to overcome and something that he can work with. Um, it never dismisses it. Um, it doesn't play it up for sympathy at all. Um, he just, you know, he learns a new way of living. That's kind of how the character arcs work in general, is that all of these characters are dealing with both the trauma of the events that happened in the previous story but now all this new adversity, and it kind of shows how each of them deals with it in their own way. So in the first volume of The Utopian, um, Michelle Matterson was the kind of foil slash confidant of James Douglas, The Utopian. Where do we find her when uh, The Utopian Foundation starts? So in the first Utopian story, Michelle was, she was this Chloe Sullivan from Smallville type of character. She this sort of crusading journalist, uh, took her craft very seriously. Her father was a journalist. Um, you know, we find out that he died of cancer years ago. Um, she's heavily influenced by him in her life. That's all she wants to do. She wants to be like, you know, her heroes are Woodward and Bernstein. When she starts university, she's kind of having to start over because she was the editor of her school newspaper at Sagebrush High School. 
she got close to James as the utopian. It was his legacy that kind of inspired her, along with some other people, to form the Utopian Foundation. When she starts university, this is a whole new thing for her. Uh, she's no longer the top dog. No one knows who she is. She doesn't know the lay of the land. So she's having to start over again. Her confidence is shaken a bit. She's, um, you know, obviously traumatized by what happened with James, but she's not dealing with it. She's kind of in denial a bit, and it's, it's making it hard for her to, you know, start as a freshman in college, which is already as stressful time as it is. I really wanted to tell the story from a variety of perspectives. You know, you've got her, you've got T-Rex, who is a former uh, drug dealer. I was inspired by this NPR story about former gang members who turn their lives around and become like kind of anti-violence activists. And uh, basically T-Rex is inspired by James's sacrifice to change his life. So he leaves his crew behind and he like becomes a volunteer at the center. And he's a little conflicted because he's sort of still living in two different worlds. I was watching a lot of The Wire when I was writing this series originally. So a lot of that seeps into uh, sort of his storyline. And I think really, if you, look at the, the, if you look at the Foundation story overall, you can kind of see a lot of what David Simon was doing with The Wire in what I'm doing, although not as well executed at all uh, or as brilliant at all um, in the Utopian Foundation because you've got kind of, there's a lot of bureaucracy things happening. You've got the education aspect. You have the quasi-criminal underworld aspect, but I mean, ultimately it's just telling these people's stories within the context of all of that. Was there always a sequel intended for the Utopian or what was the inspiration behind creating the foundation? When I finished the first volume of the Utopian, I entirely thought I was done with it. I had no plans to do anything else in that world. Like I had killed the main character, which by the way, is not really giving away that much. The initial Utopian series was told from James' perspective. And I've been told by readers that it's somewhat of an unreliable narrator situation. It's not entirely clear what happened or didn't happen in the first volume of the series, which um, kind of, I think, gives me some flexibility in what to do with the rest of it. Then, of course, the foundation started off really strong, did that for like a year or a year and a half, and then went on hiatus due to a variety of things happening in my life. And I brought it back about three or four years later and finished out what was basically the end of the first story arc. Shareers expect more coming from you from the world of the Utopian. I had already started writing basically the volume three of the story, which <laughs> I haven't talked about really. I mean, I, I mentioned it in the intro to the trade paperback. I really haven't like talked about it publicly because it's probably gonna be a while before I can even find the time to do that. I'm working on other things, filmmaking projects. Um, you know, I've got some other comics I'm trying to get out there, but there is, there is a, another story coming following these characters. It might take another six years, but I'm not quite done with the Utopian universe yet. So the Utopian Foundation is available online for free. What is the incentive behind people picking up a copy of the book, which they have to pay for? Uh, I'm someone who likes to read comics in a variety of ways. I'm someone who likes to read media in a variety of ways. Sometimes I want to go and just sit down with something in paper and open it up. I always have something to read when I'm eating lunch or eating breakfast or whatever. I still get magazine subscriptions because I just like to have that physical object. I can, you know, take it with me wherever, read it, throw a bookmark in it, come back to it later. And obviously, you know, as a creator, the webcomic was free. So having the book collection is a way to, of course, monetize it somewhat. One of the things that I always like to include in these collections um, is a uh, behind the scenes look at how everything is created. And I included five pages of annotations here um, that uh, kind of give little behind the scenes glimpses that weren't even included in the like webcomic commentary uh, on like character creation, wh where the settings come from, because a lot of a lot of the settings and scenes and situations in the comic, even though they're all fictional, are based on my own personal experiences. There's a new cover that uh, I drew specifically for this volume uh, that was colored by Jason Lewis. And you know, I think it's just, it's a, it's a nice thing to have, you know, for a lot of people don't have the time or patience to go through and read 176 pages of a web comic uh, online. But if you, if you gave them the book, they might be more likely to read it. 
Um, you know, it's a much more convenient package. It's a pretty package. And of course, if someone's completely unfamiliar with webcomics, it makes a great gift. So there you have it. Thank you for joining us today, PJ. Thank you for watching. The Utopian Volume 2 Foundation will be available in stores July 17th, and it's also available right now on Comixology. And of course, you can read it at theutopiancomic.com.